Hey y'all, hello. Hello at relatively close range for me. We're trying a new thing where when I'm going to be applying makeup to my face and reviewing it, we frame up the shot so that you're closer in and you can see better and it's more realistic. I hope that it's going to work. This is the first time that we've done this. Let me know in the comment section down below if you prefer this, especially for makeup application videos. I'm going to be applying a full face of Merit Beauty, which is really exciting for me because I wanted to review this brand and a lot of you guys wanted me to review this brand too. I got a lot of comments about it, but right when it launched, there were a handful of other things that were launching at the same time that I was also interested in. And my review budget, my channel's budget for self-sponsored reviews is finite and I ended up spending it that month on something else. But Merit just reached out and offered to send me their whole line. This video isn't sponsored. They sent me these products with no strings attached. I'm just choosing to do this, the review that I wanted to do but didn't have the money for last month or the month before, whenever it was that they launched. If this is your first time to my channel, then welcome. I'm so glad you're here. I'm Hannah. I love beautiful things. I like makeup. I enjoy reviewing new makeup, but I also really love using what I have. And I like to promote using what you have instead of always buying the next new thing. If that sounds good to you, I hope you'll subscribe. And now let's go ahead and get into the meat of this video. All right, I'm gonna tell you what I have on my face right now, what I'm starting with. I'm gonna tell you which products I have. I'm gonna tell you what my experience has been with them so far, because this isn't exactly a first impressions. On my face right now, I have not very much. There's <laughs> there's quite a bit of cat hair, TBH, starting the video off with a face full of cat hair some healing blemishes, and some serum, this Replenix serum, which is really nice. This was also PR. I've been really enjoying it though. I'll link it down below. And I'm wearing my sunscreen that I've been using the most lately, which is the Benton Mineral Sunscreen. I'll try to remember to link this as well. And that's it. I usually color correct with green color corrector before coming on camera with a bare face, but I didn't do that today because I really, really want you to be able to see the quality of the products as they go onto bare skin. So I'm not even wearing primer or anything like that. And that's because if I were watching this video, that that's what I would wanna see. I feel like the complexion stick that um, Merit released is one of the most intriguing, if not the most intriguing products from the brand. So I really wanna give it its due in this video. Speaking of the complexion stick, I have the complexion stick in two colors, which is really great. I have silk, and Bone, the two lightest shades. When I was considering a self-sponsored review of this, I was looking at the swatches and I was reading about it and I just could not for the life of me figure out which of these two colors I would be. So hopefully I can provide some enlightenment by swatching these next to my other complexion products and swatching them both on my face. I have the cheek color in the shade Terracotta. I have the lip product, the tinted lip oil in the shade Marrakesh. I have the brow gel in the shade Brown, the mascara, and the brush. They didn't send me the highlighting thingy. I think that they were sold out at the time that they send me th sent me this package, but if it ever trickles through in the future, I'll definitely make sure to showcase it on um, let you know what I think. These products arrived yesterday and I, ha I knew they were coming. I, I was like tracking the box. So I didn't put any makeup on yesterday or I put on yesterday exactly what I have on today. Just a little serum, my sunscreen, and then I just waited. And when the box got here, I opened it and I applied a full face and then I wore it for the whole rest of the day. So I did get a sense of the way the products wear. I formed some first impressions yesterday, and this is going to be my second time applying them. So I can let you know at least a little bit, kind of like how they wear. There's not gonna be anything where I'm like, oh, this looks great, and then by the end of today, after having filmed the video, it looks terrible. I just wanted to buffer myself from that a little bit, but I haven't been testing these products for two weeks or anything like that. This is sort of a, a review mixed with kind of like a first impressions, a classic second impressions video. So the complexion stick. In my life, in my heart, probably the most controversial and maybe even the most disappointing of everything that arrived in this, oh, I forgot to tell you, beautiful little pouch. This is what was inside the box from Merit. Can you even? I think this is brilliant. It's just so simple and lovely, no zippers, nothing clunky. It's gonna be so convenient. I feel like this is a really easy thing to travel with because it's only gonna ever take up as much space as like the makeup that's inside of it because it squashes down. I also love, love this color so much that it kind of hurts. 
You know when there's just a beautiful thing and it kind of hurts? That's how I feel about this color, this like soft velvety corduroy. They just really got me with this whole thing. What a beaut. What a beaut this makeup bag is. I can't remember what I was saying. I can't remember why the bag occurred to me, like why the thought of it interrupted my flow. I can't remember. But here's the complexion stick. This one is bone and this one is silk. Bone, silk. Bone, silk. Bone, silk. Bone, friends. Are you seeing what I'm seeing? It's pink. And this is silk. It's peach. And they're both too dark for me. I want to, when I put something like this on, I want it to bring the t this tone on my face up to the color of my neck and chest and arms and the, r the rest of my whole body, the color of my skin, because my skin has some redness on it. This isn't actually the color of my skin. My skin is like darkened by redness. And both of these in their own way, and let me just do this and then maybe I can sort of, both of these in their own way are going to even out my skin, make it look nicer, make it not so blotchy, you know, make the surface look really nice. But neither one of them is going to bring the color of my face up to the color of my neck. It's really sad because the formula is so beautiful. And here's what I'm gonna do. I'm actually gonna mix. So here's here's silk, the, the brighter and peachier one. Here's bone, the sort of more neutral, but sort of more brown one. I'm just gonna blend it into my skin just so you can see, because I know this is what, what we're all here for, right? You just wanna see how it, how it applies, how it goes on. And it's not as though it's completely untenable. It's not as though it's laughable. It's just not what I would have wanted in terms of color. So it melted into the skin beautifully. It killed the shine, but it didn't mattify my skin completely. It's just stunning. Like the formula is really, really something that I like. It has blurred and evened and made my skin look more beautiful than it is. You know, in those areas where I blended it out, I will say that it, I felt like it took quite a lot of product just to cover those small areas. Like those were four full, good, juicy swipes on either side. And I only covered this surface area on each side. So I'm gonna need more product for the rest of my face. But I think that my skin in the places where I put the product looks very beautiful. And it has obviously toned down the redness. It just hasn't exactly brightened my skin in the way that I want complexion products to do because I'm hopefully using a complexion product product that's like this color rather than this color or tone. And again, I feel like that is a lot of product that I just put on my chin, but that's how much I'm gonna need at the very least. Coverage, beautiful, right? It's provided some, I'm, I would still need to spot conceal a little bit, but it's definitely evened out my skin tone. It's kind of like a satiny finish. Coverage, beautiful, finish, beautiful. Application effortless, the way it's sitting on my skin, beautiful. But look how dark my face is compared to my neck. It's exactly, I woke up like this, right? That's exactly how it was before, just a little bit less red and a little bit less blotchy. But I need more. I want more, I'm like the little mermaid. I want more. I want it to be this color. I'm gonna show you some swatches of other base products that I have. So this right here is the Urban Decay Stay Naked Foundation in 10NN. Look how light and neutral foundation can be, Merit. This is the Hourglass Vanish Concealer in the shade Birch. That's even more neutral. That, that's my dream color actually for a complexion product. That makes even the Urban Decay one look peachy. So even though Merit's Perfecting Complexion Stick doesn't look fully terrible on my skin, like it, it made my skin look better when I applied it, even though that's true, you can see from these swatches that Merit does not have a shade for me. Like they just don't have 
a product that's anywhere close to being a match for my skin tone. And this is something to which I'm totally accustomed. This is the case with the vast majority of brands. So it's not like completely shocking. It's a thing that happens a lot. The thing that makes it disappointing in this case though is that I really, really, really like the formula. I really like the finish. I like the level of coverage a lot. I like the balance of matte and shiny. You know, I like that it's sort of, it's dewy, but it's also a little blurring or it, it looks kind of like plump and moisturized. My skin looks plump and moisturized, but it's not doing that thing where it brightens up my entire face so much that it looks a little greasy or it highlights my creases or wrinkles or like the, um, you know, the marionette lines around my mouth or something like that. It's just beautiful. So it would be amazing if this had arrived and it had in it a shade, you know, similar to the hourglass or even something in between those ideal colors and these. I just feel like both of these are just really, really dark and, and really, really peach and, and pink. And I hope you're seeing it on the camera. The cam the lights really brighten everything up. You know, these lights are very flattering. They're beauty lights. Where it really shows is in natural light, like in sunlight. Uh, when I was applying these products yesterday, I was doing it in natural light because I really wanted to see everything. And after I applied the foundation, I just looked at myself and I was like, oh my gosh, your face is red, red as a tomato. Like it, my face just really, really, really looked dark. This might be okay for camera, but you can really tell in real life that I'm wearing something all over my face that's not a match for my skin tone. So I'm going to proceed now to like lighten it up. You know, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna use a little green color corrector because funnily enough, sometimes green color corrector really lightens a product that's too dark, especially when it's too dark and too pink. So I'm gonna mix some green color corrector in first using their brush, which is really nice. So that's better, it hasn't done it completely. I'm gonna put a little bit of this Hourglass Concealer in as well, just a tiny bit. I'm gonna spot conceal a little bit. And then because this part of me is so on show in this dress today, I am going to bronze up my neck just a little bit as the last step in trying to get my face and my neck to match. Okay, that has pulled it all together, but wouldn't it have been great if one of these had been in a shade that would have worked for all of that? And the formula does support that. I mean, the I feel like it can be built to conceal pretty well if you want. The finish is gorgeous. It, I think it's a really lovely one and done product, but you know, as I've said 1000 times at this point, the shade isn't right for me. The other thing about this is there's very, very little product in it. Like it's really small. The little nubbin is really small. That kind of surprised me. And let's roll it all the way up and see. That's it. That's the extent of it. It's 0.13 ounces of product. So this is this, you know, standard size concealer from Hourglass has 0.2, so almost twice as much in it. This one from Makeup Forever has 0.16, so not very much more, but these are concealers and they have a lot of coverage. A uh, foundation usually has, I think, an ounce. Yeah, this Urban Decay foundation has one ounce. So compared to, you know, a standard bottle of foundation, this is almost a tenth of the product. That's way less. And uh, it's less, I think, than most concealers as well. If it was really pigmented, like really full coverage, like the Hourglass Stick Foundation, then that would make a little bit more sense to me. But a little does not go a long way with this product. A little bit goes a little way. So even if they had the perfect color for me, I probably wouldn't be out here purchasing it and repurchasing it and having it be my holy grail. And that would be the reason. Here's what I wanna do next. I wanna put the lip product on because my lips are feeling kind of dry and I don't want to like put a lip balm on and have to take it off when I put it on later. I'm just going to go ahead and put it on. And I've actually been enjoying doing this lately. I find if you put the lip product on first, it informs everything else. The Merit Tinted Lip Oil. I have it in the shade Marrakesh. The component is really nice. Based on imagery and swatches and everything, I was expecting it to be more of a red. It's it's really something I would characterize as like a soft pink, almost mauve. I 
I think it's really pretty. With a nourishing product like this, I like to be able to slather it all over my face, like up to here. <laughs> like I like to be able to overline with it without looking. Like I like it to be sheer enough that I could kind of be like and end up with those kind of like messy, sexy, glossy lips, but without worrying that the pigment is going to make it look like a real mess. You know what I mean? When you're doing like that hot mess thing, you have to kind of like walk the line between hot mess and real mess. I feel like there's enough pigment in this that if I did that, if I were just like with it, I might end up on the like real mess side of things. In order to keep it on the hot mess side of things, I feel like I have to just check in the mirror and just make sure that it's, you know, it's outside of my lip line, but only by a little bit. So it does have some pigment. It's not one of those lip oils that's like, you know, they look different in the in the tube, but really like all the colors are the same and they're all basically like clear. It's not like that. I mean, you can see it changed the color of my lips. On me, at soft pinks like this do tend to lean red. So it definitely looks like a red leaning on me, like maybe a little bit more like what I was expecting from the color Marrakesh. It's, I'll, I brought some things to compare it to and I'll show you right now. And I realize I haven't really talked about the formula yet apart from the level of pigmentation, but I'll get there. This is Bobbi Brown Crushed Lip Color in the shade Bare. As soon as I applied Marrakesh yesterday, I was like, I bet this is nearly a dupe for Bare. And indeed, they're really similar in color, although of course they're very different in formula. This is Moroccan Sunset from M Cosmetics, a really pigmented gloss. And I'm swatching it because Color-wise, this is more like what I expected it to be, and actually, now that I'm swatching it, it's actually, it kind of is what it is. It's like a lighter version of it. So it's maybe more like what I was expecting it to be than I thought yesterday. But I think maybe I was expecting it to be darker in color and have more of that orangey red holding down the fort, just like the M Cosmetics, which is here on here on the top. So again, here's the M Cosmetics True Gloss in Moroccan Sunset. The middle one is Marrakesh from Merit, and the bottom one is Bobbi Brown Crushed Lip Color in Bare. It's a color that I like. Bare, I haven't worn it in a while, but for a long time it was my number one lip product, like my most worn. On me, I feel like it adds color. You can clearly tell that there's something on the lips, but it also looks very natural. It's like a cut above my lips, but better, because it's clearly not my lips, but it's not so producty in color that it makes a statement. It's like no makeup, the kind of no makeup makeup that is definitely makeup. So that's how it looks. How it feels is very, very no makeup makeup. It's really lightweight. It feels slippery, but only a little bit. It, I'm pleasantly surprised by how much body it kind of retains once it's on the lips. It goes on like an oil, but it doesn't feel oily. I feel like it has the benefit of a little bit of not grippiness, but just a little bit of kind of that body that comes from the pigment. It's almost like it would be oily if it were less pigmented, but you can feel that there's something in it giving it just a little bit more oomph, a little bit more presence on the lips than a straight up lip oil. And I like that because even though lip oils can be really fun to apply and look really pretty, when they're too oily, they're, they'll like, they'll do a combination of absorbing straight into your lips and evaporating like right away. And then in 10 minutes, they'll be gone. And I felt like this one, especially physically, kind of stuck around on my lips for a good long while yesterday. It was of course the first thing to wear away of everything that I put on my face, but as it wore away, it looked more and more natural and it felt good pretty much the whole time. So yeah, I like it. I like the color, I like the formula. There's nothing about it that's making me feel like it's gonna be a revolution over here. With this kind of thing, it really is for me time that tells the tale. Like I'll come back in a couple weeks and I'll let you know. There is a chance that I'll start wearing this almost around the clock and then I'll be like, wow, guys, I have something to tell you. I ended up really loving this thing from Merit and it's working for me in all these ways, blah, 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 blah. But I could also see it just kind of getting forgotten because I have a number of gloss balms and glosses and things that I like to wear that are really pretty, that are easy to apply. For the time being, it's going very well. The first date, has gone well. I'm willing to go on a second date with Merit Marrakesh. Let's move up the face. Let's do cheeks. We're gonna go lips, cheeks, and I'll stay sort of like a, a 
blinky splinky little bird with no mascara and I mean my brows are dyed so you know at least I've got some brows under my bangs here and the blush y'all this was the biggest surprise to me yesterday because one of the reasons I would even go so far as to say that one of the reasons that I decided against reviewing this initially is that the cream blush the blush or you know or the non-powder blush that they released is touted as a gel and the way that it looks in this little thingy and everything everyone said about the formula made me think that I wouldn't like it because I don't really like gel stain cheeks. I like a cream that, that has body that is on the face, that you can manipulate on the face. It's not gonna like stick and soak into your skin funny and you know, do something other than what you're painting it on to do. I just, I, I don't like that translucent quality in a cheek product. I like it to be kind of lipsticky. And I thought that this was going to have that translucent quality. It kind of does in the swatch. It kind of looks like that watercolory, watery thing, but it's kind of just that that's the color of it. Yesterday when I applied it to my cheeks, I loved myself and then I loved the cheeks all day. There was only one thing that was inconvenient about it for me or like slightly less than ideal, which is that it stayed a little bit tacky. It doesn't like totally dry down. That's not my first choice. So that's the one strike against it. And in every other way, I love it. It looks amazing. I'm gonna go ahead and apply it right now. A little also does not go a long way with this. A little goes a short way, but it layers really well. I kept applying it and applying it and applying it yesterday. And that's what I'm gonna do now. I always use a brush. I mean, you can use your fingers. I think you could probably use your fingers with pretty good success with this, but I I love using a brush on, on my cheeks. So that's just a little bit. That, if you're like a true no makeup makeup bee and you are a normal person and you just want a little, a little look where you can't tell if it's blush or if it's just your face, that's what it'll look like on you. But none of that applies to me. I'm gonna put like five times more than that upon myself. It looks dewy because it is dewy and it's gonna continue to be dewy or at least it did yesterday for me. Again, that's the only strike against it as far as I'm concerned. Not that it looks dewy because I think that it looks beautiful but that it stays dewy, physically dewy. Other than that, I absolutely love it. I wouldn't call it a gel and I wouldn't call it a stain. I feel like those marketing terms are doing it a disservice. I would call it uh, a cream blush that is semi-sheer, a dewy, cream blush. And I also think that this packaging makes it seem more like it's probably a stain or a gel stain than it actually is. I, th I would prefer it if it were in a little compact and it was encouraging people to go in with a brush and apply it. I think that it's probably not that way because they're trying to market it as something that you don't need another tool for. I, I am always going to prefer to use another tool. I was a little bit worried that this color was gonna lean super orange. Terracotta blushes do sometimes lean very orange on me, but I feel like it's really a nice soft peach. I feel like it's really working. Uh, I quite like it. I quite like the effect. And it's funny, isn't it, to think that there's also a highlighter from Merit that I don't have, but I mean, look how glossy and dewy my cheeks look. It's kind of hard to imagine that like a highlighter would enhance this. All right, let's keep moving up the face. <laughs> let's do the mascara. I mean, I'll tell you right off the bat, it's very wispy. It's not my usual gig, but who am I even? I don't mind it. I'm not, I'm like starting to understand why one would want a wispy lash instead of a literal spider's legs on one's eyes. And it does have to do with the kind of like true and complete no makeup makeup thing, which I will talk more about when I conclude my comments for this video. Something funny is going on with the eyelashes on this eye. I think I might've actually like slept funny on that eye and crushed my lashes and they're, they're sort of like a space in them. It's weird, nothing like this has ever happened to me before. <laughs> but just look at this eye, okay? Look at this eye. So yeah, really basic, simple, natural, wispy lash. I was a little happier with the application yesterday and it's because my lashes were kind of in better shape yesterday and behaving themselves. I don't know what's going on with my lashes today. But yeah, I don't love it. Like it's not my 
preference. The style of this mascara is not my preference because it's quite a natural look. Of course, I understand why Merit made it. It would be weird if Merit came out with all of these incredibly natural, like no makeup makeup products and then released like a gunky, splinky mascara. But I like mascaras like the Gucci one, you know, that are designed to be like, and this is not that way. This one's designed to be kind of like, whoosh, whoosh. So it's not my favorite, but here's what I'll say. I bet I'm gonna use it. I bet I'm going to wear it on days when I'm not wearing very much other makeup because the thing that's changed for me with mascara recently is that the way it used to be is that no matter how much makeup I was wearing, even if it was almost nothing, I was always piling on like as much mascara as I could. So I would have like really natural brows, really natural skin, nothing on my lips and cheeks, and then I would have these really splinky lashes. And over the past several months, I've sort of changed that policy. When I put on a full face of makeup, I still like to have a really splinky lash, but when I'm really toning down the rest of my face, I'm finding myself wanting to tone down my lashes as well. And that's why I've been using the Rimmel Lash Accelerator a lot because it's a nice wispy lash. And I feel like this is probably the mascara that will replace that one as it wears out. I will say it says it's really easy to remove. I'm putting a little on my lower lashes. It says it's really easy to remove and that kind of concerned me because I have somewhat watery eyes and sometimes my eyes will water and it will like melt off my mascara. The kinds of mascaras that are really easy to remove are the ones that dissolve in water, but those are the ones that also dissolve when my eyes water. But not only did that not happen to me yesterday when I was wearing this, even when my eyes did water a little bit, but I actually found it a little bit difficult to remove. My oil cleanser didn't dissolve it right away. I really had to sort of gently work the oil cleanse into my lashes and then it wasn't until my second soapier cleanse that it came off completely. So it's not as though it sticks around in the way that a waterproof mascara does. It wasn't that difficult to rem remove, but it didn't just dissolve away in water. And I think that that's one of their claims. So I did want to let you know that I had that experience. Okay, let's finish with this brow business, the Merit Volumizing Pomade. I wore this yesterday as well, and I'll say, mm, it's not the kind of thing that I usually like, but it's it's okay. Let me go ahead and put it in, and I'll, I'll fast forward through it, but I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do what I did yesterday, which is to back comb my brows to kind of coat every hair, and then I'm going to put them back into place and sort of gently sculpt them. This is a product that is to assist in a very, very natural brow look. So I'm not gonna be able to laminate my brows or to get them to stick up or to really shape them or anything like that. I'm going to have to just slightly improve on the natural shape of my brows. And if they weren't dyed so dark, I would also be adding some color with this. Okay, so this is what we're getting with this product. We're getting a very natural, bushy brow. We're not getting lamination. We're not getting sculpture. We're not getting a very strong hold. It's a very soft hold. And I'll tell you from the experience of yesterday that they're not gonna stay this way. I like this bushy shape, um, but what's gonna happen is over the course of the next hour, they're gonna kind of resume the shape that they had, but they're still gonna look fuller. So they'll have that like not makeup-y and not not sculptured arch, that kind of like um, natural brow, kind of, like the way they looked before, sort of like bleh, 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 kind of, where all the hairs aren't necessarily perfectly aligned and fluffed up, but they just look a little bit more, more straight and flat and together and maybe a little bit uneven, you know what I mean? Maybe not completely filled in. They're gonna resume that shape, but they'll be fuller than they were when I just came on camera. They'll have just a, a little bit more depth, a little bit more fullness, and a little bit more structure. At the end of yesterday, when I looked at myself in the mirror to assess the damage, to see how it had gone with my full face yesterday, it was the way my brows looked that kind of showed me what this brand is all about, because I didn't hate it. I looked at them and I was like, wow, you look like you have really nice natural brows, but it really looked like no makeup brows, just better than my brows ever look when I don't have makeup in them. And really that's what's going on on the rest of the face as well. If I had a match for my skin with a complexion stick, that's what it would look like. Kind of what the cheek looks like, although I've applied 
you know, a lot. It's kind of what the lip looks like, especially if I had uh, a lighter shade, if I hadn't chosen kind of like a punchy shade. And it's kind of what the mascara is like too, you know, if I had darker hair, it's obvious on me because my eyelashes are the color of my hair, they're not black. So it's obvious that I'm wearing mascara, but if I had darker hair, it might be a little bit like, is she or isn't she? The mascara would have just slightly enhanced my natural lashes. So this brand is really like a real true no makeup makeup brand, in my opinion, after having worn a whole face of it yesterday and then applied it again just now. And I actually like that. I kind of like it better than I expected to. I expected to hate the brow gel and hate the mascara and hate the cheek product. None of that is true. I love the cheek product. I am probably going to use the mascara. I'll probably find it very useful. And the brow gel as well. I'll probably find it very useful for kind of like more natural laid back days when I don't feel like having those sculptured laminated brows. Usually I either do the sculpture laminated brows or nothing like it's like one or the other. And I feel like because I received this product as a gift, I'm gonna be doing either the sculpture laminated brows or this. It's kind of like boy brow, but just a little bit better. Like if, if you like Glossier boy brow, but you've been thinking about graduating from Glossier to some more this type of thingy, fancy feeling, luxury feeling kind of thing, but you, but Boy Brow is like your favorite brow product in terms of the way that it performs and you just can't let it go, this would be the one. This is like the updated Boy Brow. But it still doesn't hold up my wiry brows. And that's true of Boy Brow as well. Boy Brow always slightly enhanced my brows, but it never gave them a new shape. It never allowed me to like move them and place them and they would never like stick where I put them. They would always kind of like return back to where they came from. And um, that's what's gonna happen with this look too. So if someone took all of these products away from me and then I had to buy them back with my own money, would I buy any of them back? I, I wouldn't today. I, none of them have like wowed me so much that I'm like, oh my gosh, I've got to have that. And I would like run to Sephora and like buy it back today. However, the lip product, I really like the color and I don't really have a hybrid product in I don't know, it's got this like sexy lusciousness to it. I could see myself eventually, like having it on my wish list for a while and then maybe eventually picking it up. Funnily, it's sort of at the top of my list, even though the cheek product impressed me so much more than I expected it to. This is kind of at the top of my list in, in terms of like, which one I think I'm gonna be like the most excited to reach for over and over and over again. Even though I like the cheek, the reason it doesn't occupy that spot for me is that I have so many cheek products that I really love. And so it'll go into rotation. It's just not gonna outshine all of the rest of them. It's just gonna be living with them because you know I, I get a lot of good use out of my collection of cheek products. However, of everything, the thing that's impressed me and excited me the most is the complexion stick. If there were a complexion stick in my shade and then someone took all of this away from me, including it, I might repurchase it just to have the pleasure of, of going through one getting the chance to use it. And then I would have to really assess, I'd have to see how long it took me to use it up. And then I'd have to really assess whether or not that was gonna be like a good buy for me to buy it again. But wow, I'm really, in spite of my like gripe and in spite of the, the fact that it's the one that I had the most negative to say about, it's also the one that I have the most positive to say about it. I find the formula really extraordinary. And I don't know, I'm kind of feeling this natural look. I'm kind of feeling the, the natural brow, the wispy lash. I'm, I'm feeling like Amanda Z over here. That's it. I hope that I've provided enough information for you if you came here looking for information. <laughs> I hope that you've gotten what you what you were hoping to get out of this. I'm very grateful that I got the chance to try all of these products. Again, with no strings attached, it's like the best kind of PR. They're like, we're gonna send it to you. We hope that you like it. We hope that you'll feature it, but you can do whatever you want. So Merit, thank you for that. Thank you for being like that. I will try to return pretty soon and tell you how it's gone between me and these products. This isn't gonna be the end of it because who knows, maybe I'll end up using the complexion sticks all the time and just mixing with my other products and really, really loving them or Maybe I'll end up hating the blush or something like that. I'll try to return and let you know, you know, as always, just keep in mind that this is just one person's opinion and this is just after one day. The main point of this was to make an entertaining video and kind of let you guys know what my first impressions have been of color, of formula, what my experience has been. I'm so glad that you are here today. Thank you for spending this time with me. And you know what I'm gonna say? Here's what I'd like you to do. Follow me on Instagram. If you use Instagram and you're not following me, you know, no pressure, but if it's a thing that you've just never thought to do, then 
That's it. Again, thank you. And don't forget to take extra good care of yourself today because that's what'll make you the most effective version of yourself as you do your work in the world.